I think the first thing you have to do is explore the value of, you know, the guy who works at the Bobcat plant or the woman who works on the line. She could be taxed at a much higher rate than people who are sitting on huge trust funds. And you have to say, is that the value that we have in this country? Are we people who believe that if you make money from your money, that you should be taxed less than if you make money from your labor? And so there's been this discrepancy in this idea that if you tax under income higher, people won't save as much and that it won't grow and allow for investment. Right. Or the, but, and we looked at this and talked about this with Jason Zweig, where he said he thinks it would hurt a lot of you know, a lot of Americans who make, you know, around $200,000, one to $200,000, draw a lot of dividend income. And he says the first dividend ETFs only came around in 03 after they lowered that tax rate. So how do you target, like you said, yeah. people who are living off of trust fund money as opposed to especially retirees? Who I, are I, just think, I think the first that thing that you have to understand is a lot of the dividend income that people are earning in those categories is already in a tax shelter. It's in an IRA. It's in a 401k. It's already, if it's in a Roth, it's already earning interest-free or, or uh, income tax-free. So let's, let's not over-exaggerate um, what this would mean for people under, who have incomes under 200000 I don't think that it would reduce. In fact, it might create an even greater incentive to shelter that income in a tax um, uh, That's interesting. Uh, a provision like a, a 401k or a, an IRA because you know that it's not going to be taxed. And what if you're over, you know, the, you know, we have to start pulling that out. Would there be a way to say, well, you know, don't worry about it. If you're in your 70s or 80s, you can well, still do that? I, I think one of the things that we need to change that no one's talking about is the withdrawal rules. I think that as we look at people living longer, I think the 70 years is not realistic. Now, some of this got indexed in the last um, tax reform. I think we need to be more generous. Plus, I think it'd be a great idea to allow people in those categories to actually transfer some of that wealth into a retirement kind of security program for their kids, allowing their kids to save um, for retirement. Here's one thing we often hear, which is um, it's talked about a lot with the estate tax in particular. People, Gary Cohn has said, no, no one pays the estate tax. Everyone knows how to get around it. Um, same issue might come up even you said, even if you raise the dividend rate on some, on some individuals. How would you basically force people to pay this amount so that it actually raises revenue instead of it just causing, you know, different ways for, for people to get around. I it. think the first thing that you have to do when you look at the, uh, the estate tax is you have to also understand that you've got the basis skipping rules. And so as we have always had, a, had an estate tax, we also allow people to inherit at the basis of fair market value at the time of death. And so um, if you eliminated those basis skipping rules and basically required people to take the value of that asset at the basis of the owner, the original owner, that would have a dramatic impact right, on capital gains. It might be worth $3 billion. We said, no, 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 we're going to start at $3 million and you got to pay on all of that, which to me would, would make them find even more creative ways of getting around that to, to avoid that outcome. Yeah, I mean, I think Gary's right that um, a lot of people say estate tax is um, only a tax for the unprepared. But the problem is, is that in order to avoid estate tax, you have to relinquish some control. And a lot of people have a difficulty doing that. There's very few family farms that will hit the current limits on estate. And Andrew, also, he talks about the est estate or estate tax, as you would say, in North Dakota, <laughs> increasing capital gains for the wealthy, ending real estate loopholes, fixing carried interest. He even talks about philanthropy. Maybe that's something for us to get into next time. But if you, all I know is if you tax more philanthropy, you're probably going to get less of it. Well, the, the, the problem that you have is that there is all these huge endowments and then there also is these donor-defined funds that are now the loophole on the latest tax law. And so, you know, we're, there's always going to be clever lawyers who find clever ways to get around um, the rules, and that's why it's important that you keep this simple. And to me, um, one of the great discrepancies and inequities in our tax system is earned income is taxed at a higher rate than under income.